Hi, and welcome to the Galat Knitting Circle. My name is Jana, and I'm coming to you from the north of Germany, where I study musicology and art history in a little town called Göttingen. And um, what you've seen just now, the little clip, is a bit of the activities I do next to knitting, because I do love a lot of different kind of crafts and also painting. I do like painting a lot. I recently started with oil painting, which is a whole new thing for me, but really exciting and really fun. And um, yeah, so this was an idea because we built this little food cabinet to store our food and it was just a lot of wood and we thought it looked quite plain. So why not paint something on it? And um, the design is inspired by the Norwegian rose painting, which I got in touch with um, while watching the Sit and Knit podcast by Anne and Carlos, who are knitwear designers from Norway. And their designs are quite inspired by these kind of rose paintings which I thought was really interesting. So this is a very traditional um, yeah, folk art in Norway and I think also just in Scandinavia in general. And I think it looks really beautiful and they have these really old antique furnitures there in Norway with these kind of patterns on it and it looks really beautiful. I mean this is just a very <laughs> Yeah, small attempt of ours to recreate that and it looks very different than the original pieces but it was fun anyways and um, I thought why not share that because yeah, this is not just all about knitting it's also about other crafts in this little corner on the internet and yeah but let's start with the knitting part um, so first what I'm wearing this is um, if you can see it, this is the Gold Wing by Jennifer Steingas. I knitted this in Old Merino, which is a New Zealand Merino yarn. And I'm really loving this one with the nice color work on the cuffs and then this stunning yoke. Um, yeah, especially for the spring, um, I really enjoy to wear this one. And also the, the yarn is very nice and soft. And for this kind of weather, it's quite perfect. So here it, it actually started to be really warm already. Today is a bit chilly again. Um, but yeah, spring is definitely on its way. And the days before it already felt a bit like summer even. Um, so yeah, but the flowers are all coming already. And um, the forest starting to look a bit more green again, the first leaves coming out which is really beautiful. Um, yeah, so there, today I went on a little walk in the forest um, and did some foraging which I love in this season. In spring I just really like to go and pick some white garlic and um, another plant which is called Giersch in German. I will put the name on the screen. Um, which I really like to, to use for what kind of cooking and making soups and the white garlic is just is just really nice and what kind of meals when you do nice stir fry or oh, yeah soups just sprinkle a bit on top of it and I think it makes it really nice and yeah that's what I did today I went on a little walk and then made a soup with both the wild garlic and the gish, whatever that is in English, <laughs> I don't really know, I forgot to look it up. Um, but yeah, that was that was really nice and the soup was really nice too and well it's supposed to be really healthy. Um, so yeah, um, this is something I did today next to a lot of knitting. Well actually I went out because yesterday and the day before it was so hot and um, I mean not really hot but for this season um, it was it felt really warm and I thought I could actually do some outdoor knitting so I took my knitting along 
but then it really was quite chilly today and also a bit drizzling and was not so nice outside so I didn't do any outdoor knitting um, but then went back and did some knitting inside and that I'm going to show you as well in a minute but yeah let's start with some finished objects so um, well this this episode has actually two sections one is sock knitting and one is summer top knitting because there's not that much else happening here at the moment. Um, well, the last weeks actually, it was really just mainly sock knitting. Um, well, I, I shared with you in the last podcast episode that I did um, my very first yarn dyeing attempts and I dyed some sock yarn, which I really enjoyed doing. And um, yeah, so then I was really excited to try this sock yarn out and um, that's why then suddenly so many sock projects started to come onto my needles. Um, but then also because I did do some gift knitting and knitted various socks for gifts because that's just the easiest thing to, to gift as a knitter, I think. Because socks just yeah, everybody loves a good pair of hand knitted socks. And yeah, so I'm gonna share those with you. Um, first, maybe these ones. I have showed them before in the podcast as a work in progress. These are just very simple classic socks with here the color work which has Oma which is German for grammar so these are going to be my grammar socks and yeah this is just my basic sock recipe which starts here at the leg with the heel flap reinforced heel flap turning the heel the dust gusset decreases then plain stockinette on the foot and here the toe decreases so this is just for me the very basic um, sock pattern this is not even a pattern it's just my way of knitting them and also this is a very um, very basic commercial sock yarn that one just gets here in any supermarket really I would guess it's Schachenmeier maybe but I don't remember and I don't have the tag anymore um, but yeah for me when I do sock knitting is mostly or used to be mostly just very basic commercial sock yarn nothing fancy and also no sock pattern really and yeah just very basic because for me it's always a bit of a shame to have the really stunning yarn which was probably also really expensive and then do a really intric intricate pattern with cables or whatever and then in the end it's just inside the shoes and one doesn't really see it and I always think it's such a shame that's why mostly my socks that I knit in the past just very basic and not too fancy of a sock yarn that I use um, yeah just because mostly they're inside the shoes um, yeah so this is this pair for my grandma then um, for my grandpa I'm also knitting socks these are a lot bigger because he has massive feet this is the um, these are the Sunday socks my petite knit and um, these ones I'm holding three yards together so one is this cone of alpaca and silk which is very fuzzy and but then quite strong inside so I like to use this for socks because it gives them quite a nice halo um, as you see here maybe um, but then also makes them stronger and hopefully doesn't let so many holes in um, and this one I got from the 
the wool factory in Hamburg. Um, there's a really nice shop where you can buy all the cones that are not so perfect for the yeah, knitting industry and you can get them for quite cheap and also pay the price in in kilos and it's it's quite nice um, and quite yeah makes makes these kind of yarns quite affordable because this I think it was when I got it I think it was a thousand grams and um, yeah so that just lasts forever and if I would have gotten this in the normal skeins it would have been so so expensive but this way it makes it quite affordable and I'm holding this together with this also just commercial sock yarn one in this dark brown and one in the lighter brown and yeah it creates in my opinion a really nice effect it has these specks in there and I'm quite happy with it so this pattern is just very basic also ripped socks with the two by two ribbing and the ribbing continues all the way onto the foot but plain stockinette on the lower part and yeah so this is the first sock and then the second one is on its way um, hoping to be finished soon so that I can maybe give them for Easter if I manage not sure yet but let's see um, yeah so that's the socks for my grandparents mm, I did knit another pair of the Sunday socks um, this is in Let Lope I think it's the colorway Barley and I'm also holding it together with this cone of alpaca and silk and they're very very warm like this I mean the dead lobby is already warm because it's the Icelandic yarn but now with the alpaca together it's even warmer and yeah but also these so I'm really happy with them um, yeah so then I do have two more sock pairs, pairs of socks. Well, actually, actually three, but one pair I'm wearing. <laughs> but I'm going to show you these ones first. Um, I also did show these before already as a work in progress. Mm, so this is also knit in some um, sock yarn, which is, has this nice twist I don't know if you can see that it has different colors in it and I'm holding it together with the silk mohair and it makes them very soft and fluffy and yeah also gives a nice effect to it and these ones is also very basic socks it has the one by one rib with the heel flap how I do my normal socks but then here, I don't know if you can see that, probably not, um, it has the reinforced sole of the foot. So I usually do my heels reinforced with slip one and knit one, slip st stitches, but then I continued this always on the last and the first needle, so I'm knitting these on the double pointed needles. Um, and yeah so it, it makes the sole a lot thicker than the upper part of the foot um, yeah hoping that it makes them more sturdy and yeah doesn't let so many holes in and yeah so this is something I just tried out I, I didn't know that it was gonna work but it did work and I'm quite happy with it and yeah so that's what I did here and then I did this again with one of the skeins that I hand dyed myself I showed to you in the last episode 
and this is what they look like now in socks. So this is, um, I told you that this was um, dyed with the Easter egg dyes that we use here to dye the Easter eggs. And um, I just tried that out and yeah, as I said before I really don't know anything about um, dyeing yarn. Um, and I didn't do any research really, I mean a little bit but not much. I just experimented with it and just wanted to have some fun, which I did. And yeah, but it, it wasn't sure that it was gonna work out because I don't know, <laughs> I don't know anything about this. But I'm really happy with these socks. Well, what did happen is that the first part of the skein was just like this, with hardly any yellow in it. And the second part had this very yellow color. So what I did is that from the first sock I knitted the um, the cuff first and then um, I broke the yarn and took off all the one all the yarn that was in this color and then I once the yellow came in I attached it again. Knitted the foot and for the toe I did the the other color again but just so that I could have two that are kind of the same and not one sock that is in this color and the other sock that is in this color so that's why they look quite nice next to each other I think and I'm really happy with the outcome here I also did the same thing on the sole to reinforce it I think you can see it a bit better here um, so yeah, here it just has all these slipped stitches and on top it has normal stocking and stitch and here the ribbing is um, three knit stitches and one purl stitch and I'm really liking this kind of ribbing. I never, had, I, yeah, I never did this before but I'm really happy with this ribbing and yeah, also just with these socks. Um, well, last episode I showed you the socks I was working on with the very first skein that I ever hand dyed and I'm wearing them now I don't know if I can show you it's these socks and I'm so happy with them I've been wearing them a lot and um, yeah they well I've been wearing them I guess now for two weeks or something and they hold up really nicely so I'm really happy with this yarn so the yarn that I got all of it um, on our holidays in the Erzgebirge in a tiny shop called the Bolschaf Bol Manufaktur and um, well, I think they just have really lovely yarn. It's all, well some of them is also hand dyed already but mainly it's just for, for dyeing yourself so it's all plain yarns but um, I really like this shop and I really got me inspired to do more hand dyeing so yeah now the next step is going to be to to make my own natural dye um, because that's something I'm really interested in last year I did some um, dyed easter eggs with natural dyes and I don't really remember anymore what I used but it worked out quite well well some colors didn't work so well but it was so much fun so now I really want to try that on yarn and yeah so that's that's going to be the next step in this journey and yeah so these were all the soap projects got this done already now and let's move on to some little easter projects that I have um, oh, it's just over here so in the last episode I showed you the little bunny, Henry's bunny, that I made and I made another one of those. Um, this is a free pattern on Ravelry, Henry's bunny by Sarah Elizabeth Kell. And I actually for this, I don't know if you've seen it already, I made a little make-along video on my channel and yeah it's just basically films 
um, me on my whole journey making this from beginning to end. And yeah, it takes you along so that you can knit a bunny yourself. And so this one is in, in an unspun alpaca yarn, which makes it very soft and squishy. Although the shape is not so much visible anymore than in the other um, yarn I can show you. This is made in the Peruvian Highland wool by Fircolana and it feels a lot more sturdy and a lot more strong than this one, which looks a bit flop floppy <laughs> next to the other bunny, but I really love it because it's so soft. And yeah, I really like about this pattern that you can basically use any kind of yarn as long as you adjust your needle and um, it just makes very different kinds of bunnies and that's just so cool and yeah I would love to see more of them actually so yeah if you haven't seen that video you can always go go there and knit a little bunny yourself and then also further on in the Easter theme I made this tiny little chicken. <laughs> I hope you can see this. Um, it is it is a free pattern also by um, Mochi Mochi Land, it's called, and it's called the tiny chicken. <laughs> and this one I just knit with some cotton leftovers that I had. Um, it's basically just knitting the the little body, putting some stuffing inside, picking up stitches for the little wings and here also picking up stitches. The legs, is it's just a tiny um, eye cord that I just threaded through the whole body and then embroidered the face. And well I think this is just really cute, although it is a bit fiddly for my taste. Um, I do like big knits and yeah, this is quite quite a tiny work and yeah, quite fiddly. I did already from the same company knit last year these two bunnies. They look a bit funny because their ears are just a bit all over the place, but this is basically the same. I dropped one. Yeah. It's just basically the same. Just a little body and then the eye cord for the ears. And well, I do think these kind of knits are just really cute. And um, yeah, I just really like to do kind of these kind of things also at the side, also because it goes so quick. I think maybe it took me 20 minutes or something to make that little chicken and it's just really fun to do that in between bigger projects. Um, yeah, so that's what I did. Um, yeah, so then the last section for this episode is the section about the summer tops because I did really feel like knitting something for summer because I realized I don't really have any summer knits. So in the summers before I did just continue working on big um, jumpers, just yeah, wool around. And yeah, I mean, I did show you in an episode before already this jumper, which got a bit work done but not much because it's just very thick. It's um, it's this tag by Sadness Gun. It's a bulky yarn and it's just, I don't know, it's just too much <laughs> to knit on this at the moment. Um, and just, yeah, for me it's just too warm to knit on these things, even though it's not even that warm yet, but I've just felt like some really nice summer 
summery um, tops and yeah especially um, I told you already that I had this bit of a wool sensitivity so for this summer I'm really excited to trying out all kind of plant-based fibers um, which I never did, really did before I did knit a bit on cotton here and there but nothing really big, nothing serious um, so I really want to try out all the kind of um, fibers that there are um, yeah and I'm, I'm really excited about this um, journey that I'm gonna take this summer and um, yeah fitting to this I have well I've here one summer top that I knit last summer which I wanted to show you it looks like this and well, in, the, in the front it's just very basic and then in the back it has this leaf stitch um, and I do love this pattern but I did the mistake I just used some leftover sock yarn and for me this is just too itchy I just can't wear this next to skin at all um, well I can't really wear any wool next to skin no matter how soft it is even if it's the softest merino or something I, I can't wear it next to skin and it's just really a shame because now I have this and I can't wear it so that makes me even more excited about the plant-based fiber because already just knitting on it I feel that my hands are just so yeah they're, they're just really loving this um, to knit with the plant-based fiber um, and not so much with the wool just because of this wool sensitivity that I have um, yeah which is quite unfortunate but that's how it is and yeah it makes it even more exciting than to try out the plant-based fiber um, so I have two new cast-ons with summer tops one is knit in this yarn that I shared in the last episode it is 100% viscose um, it's from the same yarn company and I hand dyed this myself um, yeah again I didn't know anything about dyeing so um, it didn't really work that well on the viscose yarn that I did on the on the wool because it, it well when I dyed it it was first very dark dark blue but then it washed all out so I did do something wrong I don't know what but now we have this very light blue which I first thought I don't like it so much and um, yeah but then I just felt really excited about trying out what this fabric is gonna feel like so I just cast it on something um, well this is now the summer secret crop by Jessie Made Designs this is what it looks like so far and well now seeing this yarn knitted I do really like it actually because it's not so solid you can see all these different color variegations and I think it looks really beautiful it reminds me of like the sky in summer and um, yeah so it, it also feels really interesting so it felt so feels so different than wool it's just much it's just not squishy or anything at all it's much harder but I can imagine this to be so nice next to skin in summer um, so yeah I will see when this is finished what it feels like to wear this one thing that I noticed I don't know if you can see but the stitches just go diagonal like this which I find quite weird and I don't know why but then when I pull it a bit into the opposite direction it kind of goes straight again so I'm hoping after blocking this won't be an issue anymore but yeah this is just 
something that is a bit weird about knitting on this. Um, but yeah, so this is just going to be a big stock in a tube um, that I'm knitting just to see how that yarn behaves and yeah, I'm finding this very interesting to try out. And I will keep you updated how this is gonna go. And then let's see how it wears in the end. And then there's one last project that I'm sharing with you, which I just cast on this morning. And this is another summer top. It's the, I don't really know how to pronounce it. I would say Archer, Archer Tank by Claire Lakewood. This is what it looks like so far. Oops. And so it's this, I think, I think it looks really nice. Um, it's just a, um, it's gonna be a, just a tank top with the stripes. This is not a bag and then the stripes here on the straps too and then um, just the front panel and then there's gonna be those two triangulars that you can knot in front. Um, yeah, that wasn't a really good <laughs> explanation but um, I hope you know what I mean. I'm gonna show you once I finish this. And yeah, I just, I, somehow I really like striped things. I really, I don't know, I'm really enjoying striped things. And this one I think is gonna be really nice and I think I'm gonna wear this a lot, hopefully. And this is knit in just 100% cotton, which I got in a local shop, which is quite affordable. Um, it's this Anna and Clara's 100% cotton. This is what it looks like. It's now another colorway, but that's what the label looks like. And yeah, this cotton, I'm really enjoying it. It feels softer than the viscosa and um, has more drape to it. Um, but yeah, it's just, I, I find it really interesting to compare now the different plant-based fibers. So my, my plan for this summer is just to do just different summer tops in different plant-based fibers and then compare them, see how the fabric behaves, how it knits, and yeah, this is going to be something that I want to do this summer. Just yeah, to find out more about the plant-based fiber because yeah, as I said before, I just knit with wool and I never really thought about plant-based fiber. So yeah, but it's going to be interesting and I will keep you updated about this and yeah, all the projects that I'm going to knit then. Um, but yeah, this is everything for now, I think. Um, I hope you got some rows done while I was talking. And well, I was would love to hear what you knit, um, maybe during this episode or just in general. You can leave a comment if you like. And um, yeah, because I would really like this to be a space where we can inspire each other rather than me just talking about my projects. And yeah, so let's inspire each other. And I will see you in the next episode. Until that, take care and keep knitting. Bye.